Hello dear viewers, I hope you are doing well. Today we have a special guest, Teacher Kemal. So I am going to um, uh, ask some questions about Hello. your experiences and you know we can exchange some knowledge, right? Yes. Of course. Uh, speaking of motivation. Motivation. Yeah. Right. How can we motivate language learners? Oh, okay. Wow. That's a big question. Of course. Motivation. First of all, like I say, mm -hmm. uh, it is necessary for learners to be motivated. Of course. Uh, well, I think if lear if I before I answer the question of how to make them mm -hmm. motivated, there are many ways to make them motivated that I'm going to be discussing later. Mm -hmm. I'm going to be talking about the importance of motivation. Yeah. In the classroom, motivation is the cornerstone. Mm -hmm. uh, learners need to be relaxed. Mm -hmm. Learners need to be encouraged. Yeah. Uh, there is a target language. I don't know, there is a reason why they call it target. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Right? Mm -hmm. So, if we want to reach a target, everyone agrees that we yeah. humans need to be motivated. motivated. On the other hand, mm -hmm. some people say that it's an illusion. Mm -hmm. well, you are actually faking your learners into mm -hmm. doing the thing. Right? Mm -hmm. Well, they say, then it's a good illusion. <laughs> it gets the job done. Oh, Somehow it works. Mm -hmm. uh, we get excited like little kids. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Uh, I myself also get motivated when my students offer me that. Mm -hmm. However, say, there are some other people who are self-motivated. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. uh, yes, motivation then uh, all in all is beneficial for the classroom. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And how can I motivate my students? Yeah. Uh, there are many ways. For me, it is all about uh, having a good relationship. Very good. With my fellows in the classroom, mm -hmm. that is enough to get them motivated. Very good. Uh, bonding mm -hmm. is very important in the classroom. Mm -hmm. Relationships, they have proved mm -hmm. to be uh, correct. Sorry, mm -hmm. if I may get another sentence. No problem. Uh, no significant learning mm -hmm. takes place in the classroom without exactly. a significant relationship. Exactly, absolutely. So, uh, what is the difference between young learners and adults in well, general? Well, they are very different. Mm -hmm. How? Well, uh, age mm -hmm. is a matter in mm -hmm. here. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, they said in English, as we get older, we get wiser. Mm -hmm. I think uh, both psychologically mm -hmm. and physically speaking, there are many changes taking place. Of course. And this is going like, to reflect on the learning environment. Mm -hmm. like, let's talk about the environment. Mm -hmm. We need different environments for younger learners mm -hmm. than older learners or the Absolutely. adults. I mean, the classroom design, the, 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 the visual aid, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, and, and everything that is related to the environment mm -hmm. that we need to create for learners. Mm -hmm. And the teacher himself, the methodology, the choice of methodology for teachers should be also different. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Like, it depends on way, ways younger learners mm -hmm. learn better. Yes. And we know that they are auditory learners. Mm -hmm. They learn by hearing more, exactly. right? Okay. They are very good at imitating things. Mm -hmm. They are not very good at analyzing complex grammar mm -hmm. structures critical or critical thinking, mm -hmm. like you said, or establishing shortcuts or mm -hmm. stuff. So the adults are better on the other hand. So um, I think uh, that would be a major difference. And the autonomy. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. Nowadays, you know, with the rise of technology, mm -hmm. uh, digital learning is taking the world by storm. Exactly. Right. Okay. Mm -hmm. Uh, I'd say also with the abundance of the sources of knowledge, mm -hmm. uh, independent learning mm -hmm. is getting really popular. Mm -hmm. uh, yes, so adults are more suitable also for independent learning. Very the autonomy of learner mm -hmm. is very important for adults, while kids mm -hmm. need to be with you exactly. all the way. To control by some Yes, sort of yes. Mm -hmm. uh, they are kids. Of course. Oh, one last thing sure. uh, about kids. Mm -hmm. I get inspired a little bit of uh, mm -hmm. Pink Floyd mm -hmm. Uh When we talk about control, um, let's be cautious about the control of kids. Mm -hmm. And let's uh, let our schools be a space for our kids, another prison. Good, very nice. Uh, next one is, is this. What are the probable problems of students while they are studying and learning, what can be those probable for me, problems and are, challenges? Exactly. Mm -hmm. uh, for a teacher, mm -hmm. there are many challenges and mm -hmm. they mainly arise of the learner. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. Learners enter the classroom mm -hmm. uh, 
when they have problems, especially yeah. adults. Adults. Uh, let me talk about adults. Mm -hmm. Fo focus on that for a bit. Mm -hmm. They don't come clear-minded to the classroom. They yeah. bring their wife to them. Exactly. Uh, I think mainly the biggest problem is anxiety. Mm -hmm. uh, learners are usually anxious in the classroom. Mm -hmm. And there is something called the effective filter. The effective filter is a kind of filter that usually blocks learning. Mm -hmm. It establishes usually when learners are stressed out. Mm -hmm. So it's triggered automatically. Yeah. So learners cannot focus on the learning. Mm -hmm. And it drastically affects the learning process. Mm -hmm. While mm -hmm. prevention is the key in here, it's mm -hmm. very easy and recommended to reduce the effective filter in the classroom yeah. through uh, many techniques, mm -hmm. actually. Uh, bonding with the students, again, mm -hmm. is my theory. Mm -hmm. uh, that would help reduce the effective filter, mm -hmm. help them be more concentrated, mm -hmm. focused, mm -hmm. more passionate about the learning, and at the same time, more motivated. Very so it's uh, more psychological for me. The psychological dimension mm -hmm. uh, in the learner is the most important thing for me, actually, because so far, still using, with all of the scientific development that we have got uh, at our disposal, mm -hmm. it is still mysterious. Mm -hmm. how people learn, especially language. Okay. It is still a great deal of what is going on in the human brain. Mm -hmm. So, I think the most important thing is to prepare the grounds and mm -hmm. the environment for the healthy learning to take place. Very and good. avoid the learner-centered classroom. Or, oh, sorry, the teacher-centered classroom. Right. And move more into learner-centered classroom. Mm -hmm. Relationship. Mm -hmm. oh, and let's just forget stereotypes and cliches, especially in learning. I like that. Oh. And uh, it says that, what sort of material would you recommend students to use, like books, apps, websites? Well, uh, materials. Yeah. Uh, that is another talk. I am a big fan of authentic materials. Mm -hmm. I see what authentic materials mm -hmm. as an important source for knowledge in the classroom, for authentic knowledge. Yeah. What would an authentic material be? Mm -hmm. Well, an authentic material would be your favorite show. Mm -hmm. Tell me about your favorite show, mm -hmm. your favorite song, yeah. your favorite book, your favorite everything. Mm -hmm. Well, as long as it is in the target language, all right, so somehow it's going to be alien language mm -hmm. learning. Yeah. Right? However, uh, many authentic materials, mm -hmm. whether they are academic mm -hmm. or colloquial, yeah. whether they are spoken or written, uh, can be used in the classroom yeah. in a great deal. A skillful teacher can raise a lesson mm -hmm. out of any authentic material. Mm -hmm. And again, when it's authentic material, mm -hmm. it is more realistic to learn. Of course. And, 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 and the students see how the uh, 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 natives use the language for real. Exactly. So it's going to be great adaptation for them. Very nice. However, it may prove challenging for them mm -hmm. as for the complexity and the many literary skills that mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm are involved in authentic texts, like ellipsis, mm -hmm. for example. Exactly. There might be many words that are deleted, taken into account that the native speaker is already aware of the structure, mm -hmm. which could be challenging of course. for the uh, native mm -hmm. learner. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. However, here comes the role of the teacher mm -hmm. to simplify the authentic text. Facilitate, actually. Facilitate it and mm -hmm. simplify it, and uh, to cater to the needs of the students for understanding this. However, without uh, over let me say, messing up mm -hmm. with the authenticity of the text. On the other hand, the inauthentic materials mm -hmm. can be a great way to present language items, nothing mm -hmm. more. We are the semi-authentic materials, mm -hmm. my favorite. Mm -hmm. uh, we manipulate the authentic material, mm -hmm. and it is still authentic, but it's made semi-authentic because it's somehow manipulated, so it could fit better into presenting the language items that we want, still keeping the native-like mm -hmm. essence of the written or spoken mm -hmm. discourse, which means any kind of text. Mm -hmm. uh, what we are speaking now is text also. Yeah, exactly, exactly. Very good. So, uh, there is a common question that I received a lot from the students. They say that, teacher, grammar or vocabulary? Oh, all right. Okay. Which one has no, the no, most okay, importance? The cliche teacher would say mm -hmm. both. Okay. Well, he's right. Mm -hmm. You know what I like about cliches? Mm -hmm. They are right. <laughs> So, vocabulary or grammar? Okay. Let's say grammar is the bone, mm -hmm. vocabulary is the flesh. 
Okay. We are made of flesh and bone. <laughs> there you go. I like that. Right. Well, like that. if you tell me which one is acquired first, mm -hmm. well, if we talk about the natural acquisition of the language, mm -hmm. there is nothing called grammar. Yeah. Right. Yeah. However, there is universal grammar. Exactly. Universal grammar is something like a system mm -hmm. that is built in in the human brain. Exactly. There is universal grammar. Every language has a subject and an object and an action mm -hmm. because it is directly related to the way the yeah. universe works. Mm -hmm. There is the basic connotation of the word, which is positive, negative or neutral, mm -hmm. which is good or bad, which is uh, light or dark, which is, I mean, um, I'd say, mm -hmm. to cavalry. Vocabulary. And, uh, the way the vocabulary is presented, mm -hmm. which is the grammar. <laughs> exactly. Right. Uh, they one last point, other, right? Uh, exactly. Mm -hmm. Of course. Uh, I am more in favor of descriptive grammar, mm -hmm. like you get the language mm -hmm. and then the grammar shows you how the language works, mm -hmm. rather than we get the grammar and then you make the language, which is pretty much prescriptive. So exactly. if you talk about traditional grammar, it is prescribed, mm -hmm. which is the thing that is a little bit old-fashioned and doesn't meet the modern Mm -hmm. lifestyle with the abundance of resources mm -hmm. when you can be exposed to great amounts of language mm -hmm. where uh, relying on the more natural approaches would be more satisfactory mm -hmm. for nowadays so mm -hmm. for nowadays the cowboy comes first Very good. the grammar is more inductive mm -hmm. I like that okay do you recommend a student to learn multiple languages simultaneously I don't why? Because I think it's tough and challenging. Mm -hmm. Because uh, there is a capacity. Mm -hmm. uh, and okay, simply speaking, they're gonna get confused. Mm -hmm. Exactly. Uh, exactly. However, uh, talking about bilingualism is another mm -hmm. issue. Mm -hmm. uh, well, bilingual, you you may be saying then how kids sometimes are born bilingual. Mm -hmm. All right. Well, they spend a long time here, yeah, and time. their learning systems are more natural. flexible mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and more natural, actually. Mm -hmm. And they spend a long receptive mm -hmm. uh, period, actually, yeah. where they receive mm -hmm. and they get exposed, actually. Mm -hmm. And uh, regardless of the physical dimension, mm -hmm. um, they have more suitable conditions for learning. I mean, mm -hmm. kids, mm -hmm. while adults. No, it's not for adults, they have a life. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Life is too short to learn two languages at the same time. Exactly. <laughs> nice, I like that, I like that. And uh, accent or pronunciation? Accent or pronunciation? Is it for English language? Yes, for English language. Uh -huh. Okay, as long as you can understand what is being said in standard English, mm -hmm. there is no need to tackle any of the mm -hmm. taboos. It's a taboo even nowadays, you mm -hmm. talk about accent. Let's accept that the world has already embraced English mm -hmm. as the language of globalization, mm -hmm. which has resulted in even new accents, mm -hmm. or what, what we may call even dialects exactly. forming, and they are called world Englishes. Mm -hmm. So what are these world Englishes? They are the different recognized accents that are non-standard still. Like mm -hmm. We're talking about RP, received yeah. pronunciation, some yeah. people call it the BBC English, yeah. or the Queen's English, or so on and mm -hmm. so forth. It's received pronunciation, what we call standard English. It was born mm -hmm. in Britain, mm -hmm. right? It is the standard. Nowadays, you have native varieties of that. Yeah. Some of them got to the extent of a dialect. They are really so independent, like American, Australian, and Canadian mm -hmm. Englishes. And we have the world Englishes, exactly. like Spanglish, mm -hmm. the English that is spoken in, in Spain that has its own characteristics regardless of the accent. They have even different vocabulary. There are new words that have been coined, even. Mm -hmm. Course. Let's talk about Indo-English, which is Indian English, yeah. uh, Singapore English, mm -hmm. these are recognized actually, and they have dictionaries, uh, the Spanglish dictionary maybe, yeah. I think. Yeah. However, uh, as long as it's comprehensible, mm -hmm. I don't think, or as long as the pronunciation and the accent doesn't interfere with understanding, mm -hmm. it's perfectly fine mm -hmm. to be yourself. Very we good. can take an example of the best people who could express themselves. Mm -hmm. The Mahatma Gandhi yeah. was a very good influential speaker. Of course. He had an accent mm -hmm. and he spoke English. Mm -hmm. And purpose. he influenced On purpose. millions. On purpose. On purpose. Right. And he influenced millions. Mm -hmm. All right. Mm -hmm. and, and I still uh, feel really relaxed to hear, to hear him talk. 
His Indo English charms me, man. Yeah. I like it. Fantastic. Yeah. Fantastic. And uh, so, do you think that is, uh, is it possible to learn English without going abroad? It's not. Mm -hmm. We need to bring abroad to you. How? Nowadays, we have many ways to bring abroad everywhere you are. See my lovely smartphone? It yeah. brings all of abroad at a click of a button. Mm -hmm. Times have changed. Mm -hmm. And we teachers need to admit that. Exactly. Okay. So are we talking about nowadays? Yeah. No need, man. <laughs> Not even before. We had books. Mm -hmm. Since we had books, we also lived the human evolution yeah. on the level of education and brain. Mm -hmm. Right? So mm -hmm. books are a great source of learning languages. However, there is the other three part okay. of the thing. Mm -hmm. Some languages have phonetic styles yeah. and sorry, phonetic information that that can, could replace even hearing the language. Mm -hmm. You would need a master though. Yeah. yeah. However, if you go abroad, there is a better possibility that you learn the language more effectively. Mm -hmm. Actually, in other words, you acquire the language. Mm -hmm. While where you are not abroad, you are learning the language. Mm -hmm. What is Learning, what is acquisition? Mm -hmm. That is a bigger question that of we need course. to tackle. Of However, course. I'm going to be explaining that in a nutshell. Mm -hmm. Learning, you spend effort. Mm -hmm. Like when you are here, you spend effort, you come to this school, yeah. you listen to the boring talk of the teacher. Mm -hmm. And <laughs> when you go abroad, or when you go abroad, you go out with this hot girl, you have a couple of drinks, mm -hmm. all right, she struggles to understand you, mm -hmm. but she wants you so bad, so you have a happy ending, yeah. and you learn a little bit. All right, dude. Very good. I hope Very that was a good answer. Very good. Uh, exactly, absolutely. And uh, the final question, uh, I mean, we have to be very careful about your time because yes, you have to have classes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, it says that how long will it take for a person to really learn every necessary uh, elements of language to speak properly? It because I receive this, yeah. this question a lot. Uh -huh, I see. Mm -hmm. All right, it depends on, it is very well uh, known that, mm -hmm. okay, well, does it mean that you say that you said that the individual needs and I don't know how much does he need? Who's this individual and how much does he need? I mean non-native speakers. Non-native speakers, okay. Yeah. What are they gonna do with the language? That is the first well, question to ask, exactly, all right? Yeah, yeah. So there is something called English for specific purposes. Mm -hmm. If you are really in a hurry mm -hmm. to do something with the language, yeah. tell me what is your purpose mm -hmm. and you get an English mm -hmm. for your specific purpose. Exactly. Uh, hypothetically speaking, for communication, basic communication and traveling abroad. Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's not going to take less than six months. Exactly. At to least. get a healthy At course least. Mm -hmm. that has the four skills discussed, mm -hmm. practiced, mm -hmm. and uh, enjoyed. Exactly. Exactly. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. So, uh, thank you very much for Thanks joining us. Thanks a lot. Us. It was my pleasure. Uh -huh. uh, right. Right. Okay, see you next time. See you next time.